That's a $3,000 wheel. Turbo vet, yeah. Lincoln Felter, it's red. <laughs> so I just bought a twin turbo 427 Corvette. <laughs> Very nice. It's red, 427 built transmission. You can't even tell that it it's boosted from uh, under the hood. And uh, HRE wheels, three piece. I don't know how much those are. Brembo brakes, things loaded up. <laughs> Very nice. They're gonna ship the car to me, so included in the price, so I don't need to make a trip down to Arizona, which would have been cool, but I'm gonna be going down there next year anyways for my graduation. So now we just sort everything out and uh, send the check down there and they will go ahead and ship it up to me. So I guess the next clip will probably be of you guys seeing me taking delivery of this twin turbo Lingenfelter Corvette. What a day. <laughs> Alright guys, the car is almost here. It's almost that time. It's been such a long wait. We're going to get gas in my brother's Corvette right now because we plan on taking all the Corvettes to go pick up the car. So, my black one, and then, of course, my brother's, and then the new Lincoln Felter Twin Turbo. Twin turbo, that is gonna be such a weird feeling, driving a twin turbo Corvette coming from a supercharged Corvette. And uh, the next scene will be showing up to pick up the Lingenfelter. And after that, I think we're gonna go to a car show. Surprise my uncle. Oh yeah, the wheel's all scratched up. So that 3,000 wheel. That's a three thousand dollar wheel. I don't know what's going on. Real quick, let me explain what happened here. Basically, the car had a flat tire. The tow truck driver decided to drive it on that flat tire to the parking lot, destroyed the whole outside of the wheel. Obviously, we were a bit heated in the situation. It took us a few hours to get the jack and a new tire on the car, but we finally got it on there. And it looks like I will be going after the towing company to fix the damage. So we're back home now. Got to get the jack, jack up the car, take the wheel off, take it to a tire shop. So at least they can put the tire back on and get figure out what's up with that, order a new tire, and then we're gonna have to just settle the wheel issue with the towing company and the dealer and all that. All right, update guys, we just left Discount Tire because the jack I have isn't low profile enough. They're very kind folk down there. They are letting us use a low profile jack. All right guys, first drive finally in the Lingenfelter Corvette. And as you can see, it might be running a little bit of boost. Guys, <laughs> this thing just... <laughs> oh buddy, this is mean. Spinning 345 Sport Cup 2s. You can't even hear the turbos. That's wild. <laughs> nice. I've been riding, rolling, drinking, smoking, that's something I do. I've been hiding all of my emotions, that's something I do. 
I been rolling round, I been rolling round. That's something I do. I been rolling round, I been rolling round. That's something I do. I been riding, rolling, drinking, smoking. That's something I do. I been hiding all of my emotions. Okay, next day here, and a hundred dollars later, we got some race gas to put in this thing because currently it is tuned for 91, 100, 50, 50 mix. So I'm gonna go fill up, talk to my tuner, and then we'll get the splitter on and talk about this car. What's so special about it? All right, C9 racing fuel, about 96 octane. Got some octane booster, but we're running a little bit less pump gas since we don't have 100 octane here just to be safe back home here let's go ahead and put on the front splitter take a good look looks pretty mean already with that hood scoop but it's gonna look a whole lot meaner with that splitter on there in three two one and there she is let's go ahead and pull her out into the daylight first wash in the books and it looks like the previous owner took pretty good care of it with that water beating up oh yes So let's go ahead and get right into it. Like I said, this is a Lingenfelter commemorative edition C6 Corvette. They were slated to make 25 of the cars. I read that they ended up making only 10 of them. Now you're like, oh wow, you got a one in 25 car. Well, let me explain that first here real quick. So the commemorative edition car had to be built exactly to the specs that Lingenfelter wanted it. So that meant manual and navigation and Z51 package and it had to be a brand new car sent straight to Lingenfelter for the sole purpose of being built as a commemorative edition vehicle. So here we have the receipt. You can see the total of the vehicle is about a $95,000 package. The motor package was $53,000. Aluminum radiator, you guys can see the build breakdown right there. I'll go ahead and explain all the many features and add-ons that Lingenfelter added to this car to make it a commemorative edition. So, since this is an automatic, doesn't have navigation, I do not believe it was a Z51 either because it came with magnetic ride control. It's not a serial numbered commemorative edition, but the owner, as you can see, went above and beyond with the vehicle, basically got it built to spec of a commemorative edition, and then after the fact, he even added some extra goodies. So the commemorative edition, we'll go ahead and start with the body kit, hood, splitter, side skirts, and the rear fascia. The rear fascia, I wasn't sure how I was gonna like it. As you can see, the spoiler is built into the rear, but after having it for a while and seeing it in person, I think it looks a lot better. Now, I have Lincoln filter embossed on the bottom right-hand side of the vehicle. The one of 10 or one of 25 have it in the middle. Oh well. Staying with the exterior, next item we have the HRE wheels. Now this is the only one I was able to get polished so far. Haven't had much time to do the other ones, but as you can see, they're three-piece HRE wheels, 756 series with 
Lingenfelter's own personal touches, as you can see here, the center caps. Sticking with the exterior as well, we do have Brembo brakes, four piston. As you can see, Lingenfelter Brembo. Let's see if we can get a better shot. Here you have it, right there, Lingenfelter by Brembo. Now, obviously, I have my black Corvette. That doesn't have Brembos. I have stock size brakes on there, just drilled and slotted by Willwood, Willwood pads, and they stop pretty well. But these, yeah, these are kind of on a whole another level. Small tidbits, exterior Langenfelter banner, chrome Langenfelter badges, as you can see. And then this splitter is also a custom piece that Langenfelter put on there. Now, one last piece of the exterior is the tires. Sport Cup 2s on this one, and in the rear, that's where it's special. As you can hopefully see, we have some very wide tires, 345 wide tires. Here's my hand. My hand, yeah, about eight inches long, so a little bit over half. Yeah, there's some thick boys. Another thing we'll go ahead and group in the exterior. Can't really see them, but Coney shocks and custom shock covers. Now that is it for the exterior. Let's go ahead and move into the interior. I know, I know, you guys want to know what's done to this thing performance-wise because that's where the owner kind of took it above and beyond compared, well, at least compared to what I'm used to. Interior, here we go. So the biggest piece of the interior, as you can see, is that Caravaggio Canali leather. Or Caravaggio. I call it Caravaggio. Easier to say it that way. Probably butchering it, but that's what it is. Now definitely the biggest surprise. I'm usually not a fan of red interiors, but man, this one looks pretty dang good. The owner did switch out to C5 seats. I mean, they are slightly more comfortable just because they're a bit wider. Uh, padding is a bit softer too. Uh, but I do have an airbag light because I don't have side airbags now. But I guess that's what the previous owner liked. But as you can see, all the other interior touches, the wheel here, the Lingenfelter, and the headrest embossed as well. Uh, don't mind that, that's just something that I use to adjust my air conditioning. So, shift knob, boot, wheel, door panels, glove box, the lower half of the dash, seats, center console, shift lever handle, and boot as well. Now, one last final piece of the interior. Yeah. Uh, Tubbed out a little bit here to fit those massive 345 wide tires, but if I'm honest, it's not really too big compared to the stock Corvette. It's kind of cool to say, hey, I got a tub rear section to fit some massive tires. So main reasoning that the rear is tubbed is because this is still a narrow body Corvette, which I like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I like the wide body Corvettes, but the narrow body Corvette is more so of a sleeper, especially this one. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about that now because I'm sure a lot of you guys are uh, wondering about that. Just go ahead and do this. Come up here. And you guys ready for it? Three, two, one. Huh. Looks mostly stock. As you guys will see in an upcoming video, when my friends reacted to uh, the car, they're like, pop the hood. What's done to this one? Now, right off the bat, you can notice this. They were knocking on that. Now, my friend was pretty observant. He's a Subaru boy, though. And he did notice, down here, there is a box that says Greddy. Thinking about getting some tape or a piece of plastic to cover that up. Um, so, other than that, you got the intercooler tank. Obviously, air to water intercooler. Now trying to spot the turbos. Obviously not mounted out of the hood like the great Cletus McFarland and many others, but they are down there. But other than that, you can't really tell. It just says Lingenfelter. Few people, if you're big into the Corvette world, know that Lingenfelter, they make some special cars. If you're just a passerby walking by this car, you're like, oh wow, clean car, some nice wheels, body kit. It says Lingenfelter, whatever that means. Cool interior under the hood, wow. Uh, looks like a stock intake manifold. Uh, we got some fancy cold air intake. It is fancy for sure. But it is, in fact, twin turbo 427. So, twin turbo 427. They take a 427 block, 
This was a 2006, so it has LS2 heads. They port and polish those CNC. They have the 427 block. They strap some turbos with some custom manifolds. The turbos I'm having trouble with, they're either Garrett GT28s or GT30s. I've seen both of those thrown around. They're ball bearing turbos. Again, both of those articles, conflicting numbers for boost. One says five, one says 11 stock. Regardless, we're not running that anyways because of that little module on the dash. Now, this is a Gretti Profec boost controller. As you guys have seen a little bit in this video, it might be in the couple videos here where I make some first pulls, but the target boost was set to about 18 PSI. The limiter was set to 15.5. Not sure why they did that because it uh, definitely has enough fuel to handle that. As I found out, So I have adjusted my boost control, which was a bit of a process, which you guys will see in a later video, but as of right now, low boost, 13 PSI, high boost, the peak was 19 before I reset it, but we've been dialing in the boost. So high boost, scramble setting, eh, not yet. Low boost, see some of my settings here. Again, conflicting information here. I don't know what power it's making at that boost level. I've heard 800 wheel is not out of the realm of possibility at 19 pounds boost. Maybe you guys can shed some info on that, but hey, that's cool. I've also heard 900 wheel on pump and on E85 1000. That would be pretty sick, but I have my doubts. I had my doubts for 700 wheel, but after getting on the, the, you know, the loud pedal a bit, I kind of believe it. I'm over here used to my little six liter. This is a seven liter obviously, so it's obviously gonna make some more power with boost. Now, what else did the owner do to the car? At that power level, I'm sure the owner quickly found out that the stock six speed was not gonna handle that power. So he sent it off to Circle D transmission and I know it has a billet output shaft. Circle D doesn't mess around. Next thing under here is what I am most excited for because I have an 05 Corvette and if you know anything about that then well these next things are going to be important. Stage 5 RPM rear diff axles and an upgraded torque tube. Now besides the one Lingenfelter receipt I probably have 50 to 80 thousand dollars in other receipts that has been put into this car. Apparently he's already had the motor out which some might cringe at that but I say great because I know how uh, these high horsepower builds go sometimes, so it's already been out and refreshed. But the axles and the stage five diff, the transmission, those are all just icing on the cake. I didn't even know that was done to the car when I bought it. I noticed the boost controller after I bought it, so I'm like, that's great, but I'm gonna need to fix all the other things like the diff, the axles, the torque tube, if he hasn't already done something to that, but it looks like he already has this car set up for uh, some high horsepower applications. Now fueling, like I said, I know it has enough fuel because it has dual four pumps. So the car has stock fuel rails, obviously has some upgraded injectors. Well, I saw that in the notes, but to handle the power, obviously needs that. So fueling, we're pretty well set up there. Could use some fuel rails eventually, but one of the first things I'm gonna do for fueling is probably a flex fuel kit. Because up here in the Pacific Northwest, Hard to come by race gas, as I have come to find out, because we are running on 91, 150, 50 mix. I've been running MS109 and R92, but E85 is pretty readily available. But that is it, I believe, on the long list of items of what makes this Lingenfelter Corvette a Lingenfelter Commemorative Edition. And then the list of things that the previous owner did. Now let's go ahead and make just a couple slight pulls. All right, everyone, that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. Be sure to subscribe to stay tuned for more content with the car. But if you're into motorsports, you're in the right place. With all that being said, join the club, and I'll see you in the next one.